Hello and welcome back to the series of videos in which I create an 8-bit synth using the basic Max MSP objects. In this final video, I'm going to make it so it is possible to select different voices, the different instruments or the oscillators that I have created by pressing these pads on my MIDI controller. I want to make it so that pressing this first pad button, the first pad, would target these rectangular oscillators, this couple of oscillators here. The second one would target the triangular oscillator. The third one would target this noise oscillator. And the last one would trigger the sample I have set in this playlist object. So that after I select an instrument, playing these keys would play only from those oscillators. And to do this, of course, I need to look into these pads right here. What kind of data do these pads actually send out? And for this, you will notice I'm using my Samson Graphite M25 MIDI controller, but of course it is possible to do this kind of patch using any kind of MIDI controller that uses buttons or pads or uh, multiple keyboard layouts, etc. So let's look at what exactly happens when I'm pressing these pads. Now you can see by the note in object that is connected to case slider that it is sending out some kind of note value. Right, so uh, it is in fact the same thing as pressing these keys on my keyboard, but something is obviously different about it because it is not a keyboard, it is a pad. So I'm going to zoom in on this note in object and I'm going to press I to create a bunch of integer number boxes. As you know, note in sends out the, the pitch information from its leftmost outlets, the velocity information from its middle outlet, and a MIDI channel from its rightmost outlet, something we have ignored thus far. So if I play on the normal keyboard part of my MIDI controller, it sends out the pitch and the velocity and it says that the MIDI channel is 1. Now notice what happens when I play on the pad instead. It says that the MIDI channel is 10. This is the way, this is how we differentiate between the different uh, note messages coming from the different parts of a MIDI controller. So what I want to do is to target a specific MIDI channel, make it so note and only reports note presses, key presses and releases of a certain MIDI channel. And this is very easy to do in Max by using uh, the arguments. Uh, the first argument of note in is going to choose which MIDI channel gets targeted. So if I type in note in 10, you'll notice that it has only two outlets. That's because it doesn't need to tell us the channel anymore. It is only going to report note presses and releases from MIDI channel 10. So if I play things here, nothing happens. If I press these buttons, we receive the messages. This is a fantastic way to differentiate between different parts of a MIDI controller. I just want to underline that. And I can also create its complementary note in one to receive the information from the keyboard section of my controller. And there you have it. I can press this to get these notes and I can press these pads to trigger information, trigger data from note in 10. Okay, so let's think about what we want to do. So basically, I want to send in the pitch and the velocity information to either this poly object, which is going to be sent to this rectangular oscillators, or to this triangular oscillator sub patch, which will receive these two pieces of information or my noise patch or find a way to trigger this sample. Right, so let's start by creating banks, generating banks from each of these pads. So what I'm first going to do is to create a strip note. I want to not think about the note offs right now. They don't really concern me. Let's make it nice and even here. So if I use strip notes, I'm just going to receive whichever note is being pressed but not released. I don't care about that for these pads, I just want to trigger the number as I'm pressing it. And afterwards I can, well, I can first uh, take a note of which notes are being triggered. So we have 36, we have 38, we have 40, and we have 42. These are our list of numbers of MIDI note values that we receive from this pad right here. Okay, so to target these, I'm going to use cell, short for select. And as an argument, I just need to put in 
bunch of selectors, which messages, which uh, data, which numbers are going to be detected by select. So in this case, it's very easy. 36, 38, 40, and 42 are what I want. And I'm just going to send this information to cell. Now, if the incoming number or data is not one of these guys, it is just going to send that information from here. But if it is 36, it is going to send out a bag from its first outlet. If it's 38 from the second, if it's 40, the third, if it's 42, the fourth outlet. I can simply test this by creating four buttons. And I can connect the outlets of cell to each of these buttons. And now look what happens. Gray is generating bangs, is triggering these banks instead of uh, sending the numbers and we don't have to do any kind of mathematics to get the right kind of message. And what's cool about Max is if, if you can get a bank from a piece of information, you can pretty much do anything with it. You can trigger all kinds of events, all kinds of functions. You can start processes. You can modify processes. You can finish processes. It is very versatile. So what I want to do in this case is to take this information from Notin and use these banks to select where this information gets routed to. And to do this, I'm going to use the classic gate, one of the essential objects of Max. And gate requires a single argument and an optional second one, and that is how many outlets it is going to have. So how gate works is it receives a single piece of information to its second outlet, and the state of this gate decides if this information is being sent out from the first outlet, or the second outlet, or the third outlet, or the fourth outlet. I can also set five gates then. I have five outlets. I can set gates with two outlets. Or I can set a gate with 10,000 outlets, which I think is not going to work because gate has a limit of outlets, but we are not working with 10,000 uh, MIDI controller pads right now, so that's not an issue. Right now, I just want a gate four. Now, notice here, it receives only a single message, so I cannot just route both of these guys here and expect everything to work out. What I'm instead going to do is I'm going to pack these guys. I'm going to type in pack zero, zero. So it takes one integer number from here, one from there. And now if I play something on my keyboard, it is going to send the pitch and the velocity information together. And this is the information I can send to gates. Okay. so. Let's also create a bunch of message boxes to see what happens to these outlets, what comes out of these outlets. And you will notice immediately that none of this works. Nothing works here. This information is going in, but nothing is coming out. That is because by default, all the gates in a gate object are closed. We have to specify which gates are open or which gate is open by sending an integer message, an integer number to its leftmost inlet. So if I send it zero, all the gates are closed. If I send it one, the first gate is going to send out the incoming information. Two is going to do the same thing to the third outlet, the second outlet, the three is going to do the same thing to the third outlet, and so on. If I send a number higher than the, no, the amount of available gates, it is just going to target the latest, the last gate. Now, this might cause some bugs in certain cases, but in our case, we know we are going to receive uh, either one, two, three, or four. So we don't need to worry about uh, sending too high of a number, and it is going to then target uh, the final gate here. Okay, so then what I want to do is to, let's do it like this. Instead of triggering these buttons, I'm just going to create message boxes. One that says one, one that says two, and three, and four. So the first pad is going to send the message one, the second one is going to send the message two, the third one is going to send the message three, and the fourth one is going to send the message four. All right, and we can kind of try this out by bringing back our message box friends. I'm going to do this a bit sloppy here because we are going to delete these guys very soon. So I can press this one to target the first one, second one to target the second one, third, fourth, fourth. There we go. So now we are using these pads to select target different outlets. 
of our gate, different gates, you could say. So now all I technically have to do is to create a bunch of unpack objects. I want to unpack the, these uh, pitch velocity pairs I'm receiving from gates. And then I can send all of these guys to their appropriate destination. So the first one is a rectangular oscillator. The second one is a triangular oscillator. The third one is a noise oscillator. And the fourth one, instead of sending its pitch and velocity, which isn't very meaningful here, I'm going to just send the message one. So any kind of message that goes into the first inlet of a message box just triggers the message inside. So this is going to play the playlist object from the beginning. So it will act as a trigger. And now if I connect all of these guys here, let's see if this works as intended. So far so good, and it's a triangular oscillator. Also works a bit quieter, but that's something we can fix by just throwing on a few gain objects, gain tilde objects at the right places. We have our noise, which works as well, and the cheers, the, uh, the sample sound effects. Also works. With the sample though, uh, I noticed that Pressing it triggers it, but also releasing it triggers that as well. So uh, we might want to do a strip note here. Let's see if this is going to work with just one inlet. Yep, there we go. Using a strip note, make sure just pressing the note triggers the event and the note off does not do anything. Okay, now I want to iron out a few kinks in my patch to increase the quality of the sound a bit, smooth things out. And the first thing I'm going to focus on is my triangular oscillator, but this in fact goes for all the oscillator subpatches I've created. Now, if I play from the triangular oscillator, notice that there are some clicks that appear. And not only there are clicks, but also the notes skip sometimes if I play things too fast. They don't register. And this is a very easy thing to fix if you have been watching the series, which I hope you have been since this is the last video of this series. In the first video, I used a poly, poly 1, 1 in order to fix overlapping notes, right? So I just created poly 1, 1, I put everything here, and I sent the second outlet, which is the pitch data, to the left inlet of my sub patch, and the third outlet, which is the velocity, to the second inlet of my sub patch. And this immediately fixes our overlapping notes problem, but the click is still here, right? Now, why does that click happen? Well, the problem is here in the sub patch. Before we send out the note, we multiply it with our note off message. So if a note is pressed, whatever is coming in is multiplied by one, we get the sound. If there is note off, the latest uh, number that is sent is the note off message, then it is a zero, it is multiplied by zero, so we get nothing, we get zero audio. Now the problem here is, is the fact that these changes are too sudden. If I press this, it suddenly turns on, it suddenly get multiply, gets multiplied by one, which means that there's a sudden change in amplitude, and a sudden change in amplitude is heard by us as a click. And this sudden change is indeed what causes the click. So to fix this, I'm going to delete this patch chord and I'm instead going to put in a sig tilde. So what I want to do is I want to take this note off message and send it out as a signal instead. As you will know with all MSP operators, sending a signal with a value does the same thing as just sending a normal integer or floating point number. So this is going to work just the same and it's going to cause the same problems, but now I can insert a slide tilde object, which is going to smooth over the incoming stream of numbers. So instead of suddenly changing, oops, there goes my mouse. Okay, let's fix this very quickly. 
Okay, I hope this did not bone out the recording, but uh, as I was saying, the slide object is going to smooth over the incoming values. Uh, if there's a constant stream of values in the MSP realm, slide is going to smooth those. So if I type in slide 2020, and if I just hold shift and inside this here, the click is eliminated. Now we don't get a sudden, we do not get a sudden change from zero to one or one to zero in terms of amplitude. It still happens so fast that we don't, we still perceive it as an attack, but it is smooth enough for our ears to not register it as a click. It's smooth enough for the computer to not create a click sound. And this trick is something you can do with all of these sub patches. I will leave that part to you. Same thing with poly one one and the noise uh, sub patch right here. Now there is one more problem we have to take care of, which is the matter of hanging notes. Now, if I play something and I switch the instruments, it, it works fine, it works well. But look what happens if I'm playing something and I'm holding the note and I switch the instrument while holding the note. The note is just hanging on, it does not stop. The note off message isn't being sent to the right oscillator. I can fix this by turning on the correct channel and then triggering that note's note off by pressing and releasing that key. But of course, this is not something I want to do if I'm actually performing something using this patch that I have to factor in the note ons and note offs. The patch should take care of that, right? And luckily there is an object that deals with this in Max and that is called Flush. Flush is going to output MIDI note offs for held notes. So Flush expects uh, either a pitch value in its uh, left inlet and a velocity value in its right inlet or just a pitch and velocity together as a single message, which is already what we are doing with this uh, packing in the keyboard values. All right, so we just need to send this guy to flush right to you. And what flush does is it keeps track of the notes on and note, note ons and note offs. So if there is a hanging note, flush will know. And if you send a bank to the flush's leftmost inlet, the left inlet of flush, it is going to send out note off messages for all the notes that are hanging, all notes that have received their note on messages but have not received their note off messages. And the information from flush is going to be sent uh, as a separate pitch and velocity outputs. So the left outlet is going to send out the pitch value, the right outlet is going to send out the velocity value. So that would mean that we do not need these unpacks at all. Right, the last instrument is a bit special, so I'm going to leave it like this, but I can send all of this information coming in from gate like this. And then I can send the information coming out from flush, pitch and velocity once again to its correct destination. And this one goes to the noise. Okay, I'm not 100% satisfied with the layout of this patch, but that's something I'm going to fix later. As always, this patch is going to be available uh, for you to play around with in the, uh, the video, this video's description. So I will clean things up by then. But now, uh, what do I want? So what I want is to flush out all of these hanging notons each time I press any of these buttons, right? So I'm going to take this outlet of strip note, I'm going to connect it to a button which will generate a bank, and then I'm going to just send this bank to all of the flushes that I have. And I'm going to do a nice trick to make it look nicer because we are really getting into the spaghetti territory here. I'm going to hold option on my keyboard. I'm going to select all of these patch cords, right click and route patch cords. Just going to try to figure out what looks best, what looks better than the spaghetti monster that we had before. And to indicate that this is a reset button, this is a reset bang, I can also select these again, go to color and give this patch cord a nice red color, for example. Now, these are just little touches, but it makes the patch much more understandable if you come back to this patch later or if you want to show this patch to someone you love. If it's someone you hate, you can just leave the patch as messy as possible and they will figure it out themselves. Anyway, so going back to our patch, I can 
I can play things here and if I'm holding a note and I change the instrument, the note is flushed out. It works exactly as we intended. And that's it. There you have it. The 8-bit synth is kind of complete. Not really. There are still a few things you could do to improve this synth. For example, you can add this poly to this noise object. You can uh, take this sig tilde and slight tilde combination and add it to a rectangular oscillators and or noise oscillator. Um, you can also try to figure out a way to target these controller elements. Remember the ones that we used to change, uh, add and change the vibrato. The vibrato and also the, the duty cycle of these oscillators. You can try to come up with a similar system using uh, or note in 10, select the right pads, send out the gates, and you can gate the incoming controller messages to the right oscillators. So then you can have much more fine control over uh, your oscillators, vibrato, and duty cycle. And this is not just for live performance, you know, if you have any kind of patch that deals with uh, MIDI information, sends out MIDI information, it generates melodies or harmonies on multiple levels, you can really route all that information to the different instruments here, and they're all going to create this nice 8 bit uh, MIDI orchestra, which is always really fun around to play with. So I hope this has been useful to you. This is the end of this video series. And in the next video, we are going to continue with a completely different project. And until then, thank you for watching.